Granny used to tell me all the time Sparks when feeds and preparation combine The road been right here all this time But you gotta look with more than your eyes And the small axe Jesse Royal representing for I just star mindset Rich forever Oh, oh me I tell ya Mindset, mindset Mm-hmm and put the two pictures together so that he'd look bad, okay? But he wasn't aware of what was happening. How, how did he govern? It may be good for you to explain how he governed in terms of the ministers and who was responsible for what and how answerable they were to him, All right. bearing in mind this issue. All right, there were governors and there was a department of, uh, you know, agriculture, health, and welfare. The uh, governor did not report to him that... Uh, he was that that world was had a, a drought and that starvation was at, on a, on the doorstep. Uh, second of all, the ministers, the cabinet met and they didn't report to His Majesty that there was uh, the starvation going on in Wollo. So uh, there was a conspiracy for that not to be known. And although you know later on he found out. He made changes, uh, his whole cabinet was, was changed, but again, it was too late. The people had already, you know, the, the news media had already, you know, uh, put his name out there as a murderer. So, I, from the point of view from uh, my grandfather, I was there and he was really, you know, unaware of it. Did he have ministers against him who, having been given orders, probably didn't follow through to correct particular problems. Let's say there was a, a, a bad road in this area. Their responsibility was to get it done. That's, so that's was, was that sort of problem? Oh, yes, there was a lot of problem. You see, uh, one of my grandfather's weakness was that he always paid respect to people who had served him, right? So he took the next step, if let's say a minister died, okay, he would take his son to become, uh, to replace his father. Okay, now, not necessarily was that minister aware of the situation in Ethiopia, and that was his weakness, but he did that as a, like, a favor to the father, although the father had died, he said, I will take care of your family kind of thing. You're saying then that the press reports were misleading? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, there, there is not one truth about uh, that he was aware that uh, Wallo was starving. Because, uh, let me give you another fact. In 1974, when the military took uh, the head of the commercial bank, the commissioner of the commercial bank, there was $675 million as national reserve, this is beside the budget, that they gave over to the military government. So, you know, everything was there, but unfortunately, the awareness was, was the only feeling. The impression given was that um, the emperor had this wealth for himself. I mean, but the money was accounted for. Uh, the, the, the country's money. Absolutely. You see, they gave only information out. Let me uh, give you something. The debt of Ethiopia today is $10 billion. Okay, and that, that is all gone for weapons. During His Majesty's time, and this is a fact, because Amnesty International as well as the United Nations and the World Bank brought it out, that $675 million, Ethiopian dollars, were there, uh, was given over to the military government as a national reserve. This is beside the budget. Okay, so every money was accounted for. Mm -hmm. But those facts, the media didn't feel like picking it up because it didn't make the headlines. There was money for the general running of the country, plus the reserves, 600 odd yeah, mm. million dollars. And, and those facts did not, you know, would have made Haile Selassie look very good. They didn't want him to look good. <laughs> Can you imagine that we're living in Jamaica and that we're getting things from the major networks in North America or That's right. Europe? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And let me add something on there. There's been, since he you know, was deposed, this uh, uh, 13 years past. Okay. In 
But so much I judge, I just die, but them can't jive him out, you know. Bigger than say if you don't want to sit for judge, man. Go and go try to the W out of war. I go try to the F out of fire. Because you can't jive the J out of I just die. I just die, I want you. More people. Okay. They did not, you know, in, during Haile Selassie's time, there was a, a tremendous amount of, of food available. But that availability, like I said, you know, there was no emergency called. It is the duty of the governor to call that emergency. He didn't get that to the highest power. So therefore, it was the, the governor's fault rather than the, than the emperor's. And no, okay. no the but country's today, indebted as well. Yeah, today it's in debt, uh, Ethiopia is in debt, and there are still people starving. You know, after all the, the, the seeing that has happened, you know, the, the contribution, it never went to the people. It went to the military. You know, the military sold it on the black market, okay, uh, to, for them to buy more weapons, okay. Well, 64022, good afternoon. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, good afternoon. Right, and to uh, His Royal Highness, if I am addressing him properly. Yes, yes. He says yes. Yes, uh, I want to go back to a question that I had earlier asked by a lady. Uh, the question of his, uh, the circumstances surrounding his death. I'm still at B, you know. He said that uh, the circumstances surrounding uh, uh, his mother's, his highly celestial's death. Uh, he said that he had a surgery in hospital or something like that, died after. But what he keeps repeating is that he, he's saying, they say, you know, he should have been living at the palace at the time his grandfather died. Now, what I want to know... Was that? What did you say? Was he living at the palace at the time his grandfather died? No, I, uh, let me tell you, uh, I left in 74 after the uh, uh, Easter proclamation of His Majesty for, uh, to the United States. So I wasn't there when supposedly he died. Oh, I see. But uh, being a close member of the family... And being in touch with the relatives who are still living there. Yes, then I think he must have had close contact with... Uh, his so-called death, I mean, seeing him in flesh and so on, you know. I, I, still, does, I still do not understand when he said there's no proof of his death, you know. Uh, sir, I, I made it very clear earlier on, you know, the best proof for anybody, you know, if a man is dead, the best proof for, the, you know, to, to give to people is showing his body. Yes. They did not do that. So therefore, I would be, you know, doing a, a great injustice if I said the man is dead. I haven't seen anything. Or, you know, the only thing I've heard is that they say that he's dead. So, okay. uh... Uh, and in Ethiopia, it's been tradition, you know, if somebody dies, and if it's, you know, uh, if, uh, and especially in a political circumstance, you usually show the body on TV or on newspaper or something. Yeah. But, I mean, what have they got to lose if they showed the body? But uh, that did not happen. It did not. Don't go away, sir. We must get back to this point. Right? Old, April 1966, when he came to Jamaica, here he is again, and there's some burning questions. After his, his body, you know. So I was saying, um, he's saying that uh, they, they say in all the time, um, that is that they were keeping things secret from everybody, including the family. But how did he feel at the time, you know, of his death? He and his grandson, then you should have wanted to see him, you know, in flesh. You know, he's dead, you know. Like I said, you know, uh, the best way to convince any people is if, uh, you know, the military government said that he died, but they did not show any proof. And if there is no proof, how can, for example, I accept that he's dead? Oh, so, uh, <laughs> that kind of tells me uh, the way you felt. I mean, normally out here, you know, you're a member of your relative that you, you know, you have that feeling you would definitely want to see that person, you know. 
uh, in flesh, when he, he especially had funeral occasions and things like that. I was just, uh, that was the whole thing I was trying to get at. So when you refer to the, you are referring to the military government? That's correct. Was that it? But let me uh, answer that one question that you said, what is your feeling? Yes. Well, my feeling is that the spirit of Haile Selassie lives. Uh, if he's physically dead, I don't know. I see. <laughs> Added to that, you're also saying, based on the link you've had with the relatives who are still there, right? Uh, they can't go to any point in Ethiopia and say, well, he's buried over there, or his body was laid to rest where. You understand the point, sir? Yes, uh, I understand. He said that uh, no one knows where he is now. Is that so? That's correct. That's well, correct. I have one last question, and um, that is... Out here in Jamaica, you are uh, Rastas, not only in Jamaica, but Caribbean and other countries. Rastas look forward in repatriation to Africa, Ethiopia in particular. What are your thoughts on that? That is my particular purpose that I came to Jamaica, is to let, you know, Jamaicans know that repatriation starts, you know, right here. You have to find out enough about the country that you have been long time departed from. You have to know the culture, you have to know the tradition, you have to know its history. And how are you going to fit in there? Are you going to just be a you know, Jamaican uh, quarters, or are you going to fit in with Ethiopians? So all these things is what I'm trying to figure out. Those who say the repatriation, what kind of, you know, how we can work together, because I personally feel that Jamaicans are uh, Africans, are Ethiopians. So, and i would be more than glad to work with them to, uh, you know, since their goal and my goal is the same, to go back home. Mm. There, 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 before you go, sir, there, there's one uh, conflict here. In my readings, I learned that Marcus Garvey had made a proposal. You remember the whole thing of the black Starliner, star sir? Yes, yes. Right. I, I, I had that in mind. As well. Right. In my readings, I learned that Marcus Garvey came up with the idea of the black Starliner. This was the goal. And uh, a group of people from Jamaica went to Ethiopia to see Selassie, His Imperial Majesty, and in the discourse, uh, Haile Selassie told them that that wasn't the way, if my inter inter interpretations are right, that in fact those who are here ought to develop where they are, unite, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm quoting correctly. Uh, in other words, at that time when Marcus Garvey and the whole, the whole movement, and there were a number of Jamaicans who actually made it to Ethiopia. to Ethiopia. I'm trying to remember who were part of that team. Uh, the response from the, the emperor and the ministers then was, uh, like, get yourself together. You, do you remember? Right, you yes, yes. <laughs> and, and I think that goes to today, too, you know. Mm -hmm. You have to get organized here. You have to be united here. Otherwise, you're just taking your problem over there and fighting it out over there. Okay, uh, there is, you know, His Majesty assigned uh, Shashamani to, the, from, I, I believe it was to the 12 tribes, but, you know, there is plenty of land in Ethiopia, but what we, you know, what we have to do is we have to unite, we have to come up with one idea, okay, and that is Ethiopian idea, okay, so I'm saying if you can't survive here, you can't survive over there. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. I, I want to put in two uh, short questions before I, I hang up. Uh, why did Selassie take on to himself so many titles? For example, uh, Lords of Lords and Kings of Kings. I mean, I, I do not understand, you know. Uh, all right, you see, there was uh, uh, Menelik II. Uh, in most of the provinces, there was a kings and lords in the country, throughout the provinces. In, in e Ethiopia, that is? That's, that's correct. Okay. Every, every uh, race had, for example, a lord or a king. Yes. And when His Majesty came, 
to power. He became the king of kings, lords of lords. So he was referring directly to those lords in, in the provinces of Ethiopia then? That is correct. And it, they were, in fact, that gave him uh, that, that title of the, the kings of kings mm -hmm. and lords of lords. Okay. So while he had many kings and lords within, in the various areas, he was king of kings and lord of lords. You see, I am interpreting this as being king, the supreme being, you know, and lord of, lord of, of, of our lord, you know, that, that supreme, I'm not talking of Ethiopia, you know, only, but, you know, worldwide. If you understand what I mean, but I'm I'm understanding what you're saying now. You know. One last question is, uh, can you give us your name, um, your full name, that is, official, officially and unofficially? <laughs> All right. So my unofficial is uh, David McConnell. David. Uh, yes. McConnell. McConnell. Spell it. That's M-A-K-O-N-N-E-N. Yes. And uh, my official name is His Royal Highness Prince David McConnell. Dawit McConnell. Oh. Dawit is D A W I T. Yes. I see. Thank you very much, sir. It was Thank nice you. talking to you, and Thank I you. hope you'll enjoy the rest of your visit here. Thank you very much. Right. Incidentally, what passport do you go by? Uh, I have a, an American travel document. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Oh, well. 60021. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Baji. Yes, sir. Well, it's been a long wait. Mm. Uh, previously, I was listening to the conversation where the Emperor's grandson. Take, uh, your, take your radio down. One minute, please. Still the radio on, sir. Where he spoke about a slash, right? As being God. He, was, he said that the, the white men said that Jesus, that the white men used Jesus to be their God. So he was figuring that the black man should use a Selassie as their God. I would just like to ask him, who does he worship as his God? You mean Dawit? Huh? Who does Dawit worship? Yeah, as his God. I think that's a personal question, you know, and my grandfather answered that very, uh, said uh, religion is personal, country is for the masses. Uh, by the way, I did not say that, uh, uh, you know, just because the white man made uh, Jesus their God, why why not Emperor Haile Selassie uh, a black God? Uh -huh. I'm, I didn't say that. I'm saying the white man says that Jesus Christ is white-skinned, blue-eyed, blonde hair. Okay? Uh -huh. So what's wrong if the black man says that it, Emperor Haile Selassie is God? I did not say that do you get it? Do you get me? Uh, I would appreciate if you repeat that, please. The white man says that Jesus Christ uh -huh. is white, yeah. blonde-haired, blue-eyed. Mm -hmm. The black man says uh, he's black and he's in the person of Haile Selassie. So what is wrong with any of the two? Well, the different, well, what I would say that Jesus Christ, in whichever way they describe him, that he is, he is oh, a God. But hold on, it's not whichever way. <laughs> they, they've, descri they've, they've pictured him one way. Oh, white. Oh, yeah, I'm dealing with white. I've been white then. No, 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 hold on. Jesus is portrayed white. Right. Mm. And uh, what I'm saying is there's more fact to worship Jesus than to worship your philosophy. In that the Bible gives you the birth, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. He told you all that he has done. He died on the cross for us sinners that we might have life. And that's substantiate you know, enough for we to, you know, say worship Jesus. What has Israel done for us to really say serve him as a God as the Rastas are doing? I think, you know, I, I would like him to to say something on that point. All right. Number one, the first question is who told you that uh, who told you these facts? Number two The Bible, the Bible. So uh, you interpreted it as Jesus Christ being a white man? Uh well 
Honestly, I do not deal with Jesus Christ in color. He's a spirit. The Bible teaches me that he's a spirit. And uh, in whatever color, where if they choose to portray him as white, fine, no problem. It doesn't affect me as being a Christian. But it's the individual that we're dealing with. That's great. So I, I, I didn't say... I, what I said, sir, is that the white man makes Jesus Christ be a white man, blonde haired blue eyes. Uh-huh. Okay? But I agree with you that it is up, left up to us. If it's left up to us, then it is our privilege to make Jesus Christ whichever color we want. Okay? Yeah, yeah in a sense. But then it, it goes back to the point that we're dealing with two different individuals. We're dealing with the white men in, in that sense, that teacher. You're thinking of Jesus Christ. When you're thinking of the black, as you as said, you're thinking of Asa Nasi. Who, who's thinking of, who's doing what? Go again. Okay, earlier we said that the white men make Jesus to be uh, a white with blue eyes, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they, he's Jesus. That's, that's the picture that they draw of Jesus. And he's saying that another set uh, sees Isolasi as being their God. I don't understand the question. You don't understand the question? Okay, let I, I'll, I'll try it again. Jesus Christ, as you said, that the white men portrayed him that way, as a white man with blue eyes, long blonde hair, and whatever. What I'm saying is that I have accepted him to be the Lord and Savior, and he is the Christ, the, way, the creator the, of the world. The way they portrayed him? Right. The way they portrayed him? Yes, but they portrayed him that way, and I have accepted it. You, why have you accepted that portrayal? Because I have reference, biblical reference. That Jesus is blue eyes and... No, no, not, not of his color. <laughs> yeah, but this is the point. This is the argument, sir. How do you portray Jesus? Well, like I said earlier, Jesus, to me, is a spirit. I don't really well, put him to a color. The, right. the prince is agreeing with you there. Uh, that, that Jesus is a spirit. Uh, right? If he is described as a white man, blue-eyed, blonde hair, I say, what is wrong with black uh, hair, black skin, black eyes? Oh, oh I, I, I think I get, I'm getting what? what you're trying to say. Okay. You're, you're, so you're, you're, not, you're not saying then that, 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 that Jesus, that this person is God then? Now who is God? Jesus. What? <laughs> you know, foreign. But let me ask you. Uh -huh. Forget color. Who? Who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus? Yeah, the Creator. The Creator. Jesus is the Creator. Uh huh. All right. What's the argument then? Well, what I'm trying. You're right. It is said then that men worship Isolasi as a God. It is said. It is said. By whom? The Rastafarians and even other callers. That, that, that called and he said, there's nothing wrong in worshipping Isolasi as, as their God. But now we're getting into personal religions, you know, and I am not uh, really a, a priest or a, a deacon or uh, a religion, you know, a, a man of the, 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 man of the A man of the cloth. Oh, the cloth, yeah. Uh, so I, I, I don't want to get into this kind of argument, if, if I may. No, well, uh, one minute. What, what is happening in Jamaica, right, is that a lot of the Rastafarians, right, are worshipping Isolasi as God. And I think it should have been said, I think it was said that when he came and he saw the crowd and they was worshipping him as God, he wept and told them that they shouldn't worship him as God because he himself worship a God. I don't think he had made it just clear so it would have cleared the air that he wasn't, you know, the God as it is still being believed. And I think it needs to be cleared up, you know. Are you following, boy? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm with, I'm with you. Uh -huh. uh, but when you call and you, you brought up the point about, about Jesus. Uh -huh. uh, you didn't bring up any... Uh, it, we were talking about God. <laughs> we were talking about Jesus. Yeah, but Jesus is God, boy. Eh? Jesus is God. <laughs> uh, 
I can give a biblical reference if you need that. Yeah, but hold on. We, we, your religion is yours, mine is mine. We won't go into that. No, okay. no, no. Yeah, but when we get when we get into to, to colors and you, you question certain things, don't you? Uh, yeah, we do. Right. But so what I'm trying to say um, is that the fact that some people is worshiping Islamic as God, right? It it it, it, it causes a problem because you know people. The Bible tells us that they should, you know, we should worship no other God apart from Him, you know. So whenever we, we worship any, anyone or anything else, it's known as idol worship. So I think the ear should be cleared, you know, like a lot of people believe that he still has is God. And I think the ear should be clear that he is he, not really God, the creator of the world. You know, I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Well, uh, sir, you, uh, you know, n the Rastafarians do not, for example, impose their ideas on you. I don't think it would be right for you to impose your idea on them. Yeah, okay, I think I'd it's like to ask you one personal question. Do you believe that Islam is God? I, again, you said that, a personal question, and I think uh, that is too personal for me to answer. No, but that has been the problem all along. You know, nobody is willing to say, well, this or that, uh, whatever. And I think the ears need, need, need to be cleared of what is really happening. <laughs> Uh, I have no proof uh, one way or the other. But I have proof that, that, that Jesus is God. And he is to be served and to be worshipped. Yeah, well. He, he, but he's not questioning you about your religion. Right. He says your religion is your business. No, but it should be all of us business, but I mean, each of us should be above us. Keep on, if we can direct each, each other to the right path, then, I mean. How come, sir, in the Christian religion, there is so many different interpretations of, of Jesus Christ? If you are the one who's got the facts, then you should be, you know, you should unite all the religious beliefs unto un one voice, which is yours. Say that again. Uh, the, in the Christian religion, the, uh -huh. the, the, oh, there is one Bible, uh -huh. but there are about 90 different Christian religions. Yeah. How come? That's, that's simple. Uh, it, it, it was just like that in the beginning. Everybody, you know, like, there is a truth, and to every truth, uh, to, every, to every truth, there is something else to it. Which one is the truth? <laughs> About the Lord Jesus Christ, no, the, crucified as the message that He gave us. Yeah, but there are many really, there are many churches, cr there are many ch Christian churches. Where some worship different ways. There's there are many denominations. Some worship on a Saturday, some worship on a Sunday. Which one is the right one? Yeah, but it, it, it's still believe that there there is the truth. Hold on, which one is the right one? Huh? All right, the Bible teaches. Right, and when when they give the command to Peter what he should do and that he should go and preach and asking him to accept him and that he should preach is that repentance and baptism should be done in his name, they should believe in the in the infilling of the Holy Ghost and live a righteous a godly and a sober life. He said if anyone preach any other gospel except this, let him be accursed, even an angel. Uh, let's look at the denominations, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're using that quote, which are the denominations doing just that? And does it mean then that, uh, let's call, call the names, think about it. And oh, you, you want to know what is my religion? No, I don't want to know. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. I'm just being part of the discussion, yeah? Because uh -huh. my religion is my own as well. Yes. So uh -huh. is... So well, what, I, what I was just quoted, the, the Pentecostal then. To, to, to be exact. The Pentecostal. Ah, that's what we believe. So they are the ones who are going to heaven. All who baptized in his name receive the Holy Spirit and live a righteous, a godly, a sober life in respect of whatever denomination, whatever name you call itself. As long as you fit that requirement, heaven is yours. So, hold on. What happened to the Jehovah Witnesses? What happened to the... All those who don't do that? No, what... What I said, you know, it doesn't matter what they call itself, as long as you do what the Bible says, baptize in his name, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, repent, baptize in the name of Jesus, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, live a righteous, a godly, and a sober life. When he comes, you'll, you'll, be, you'll caught up to me to him. Thanks for calling, all right? Thank you, I really enjoyed it, man. Cool, all right. Okay. Uh, still the radio. Yes, I'm just calling to say, um, to welcome His Royal Highness to Jamaica, and that um, it's not to pay attention too much to the gentleman who just called in, because 
you know, um, slavery have a lot to do with it because we were taught white man, you know, religion, which is Christianity. And it's kind of hard for many of us to accept um, um, His Highness, His Celestia, you know, God and King or whatever. But um, I must say it's nice to know that we have our heart, I don't know, a black king, and we could say, well, that man is our king. Okay? Thank you very much. All right. Bye-bye. Good afternoon. Yes. Yes. Um, greetings in the name of His Imperial Majesty. Um, good afternoon, Barry G. Respect, sir. And here, Prince Ross McConnell. Clap. Only General Ross McConnell is only a, a chosen few in Jamaica can talk to you right now. And the fact is, Jamaica, um, JBC is so strong that it goes right across the Caribbean and even touches Miami. However, um, Ross McConnell, you know, in Jamaica, for, as, for, as a Rasta man, um, one has to, you know, qualifications, right? It's very important, you know, when you go to get a job, you need a credential and stuff. We'd like for you to, ex to tell us your credentials or your educational background. Nothing personal, but please give us, because in Jamaica, a Rasta man not just has to be good at what he does, but he has to be the best as a minority. Please, could you give us some, you know, of your educational background so we know where you're coming from, please. All right, uh, I went to high school in Germany. Great. Uh, and then I went to military academy in Sandhurst. Great. And, uh, the only problem that uh, I have, I mean, I have good education, you know, uh, European and American education, but unfortunately I don't have the Ethiopian education, right. but it That's is within good. my blood. Yes. Okay. Um, the university, right? Uh, no, I didn't go to university, no. Okay, but however, you have some ed U European education. That's correct. Okay, well, that's, that's correct. good enough credentials, you know. However, um, <laughs> the next thing is um, Shashamani. It's very few people know that um, Addis Ababa is the capital of Ethiopia, much less Shashamani. This is the month of, Ethio of, of, of Marcus Garvey, and I, I, I would like to, 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 for, to, for us, the people in Jamaica, to know that Marcus Garvey was the one that said, the only man that said Africa for the Africans, and I would like for the people to know that the Rastafarians around the world are the only people that are getting themselves together to go towards Africa. And I, I commend the data that just rang, because our job is very hard, and we must get together because, you know, we, we need help to, to do the job. And I, I make no apologies for the people in Jamaica, because as she said, it's slavery, you know? Okay, so much for that. Please, I, I've been to north and I've been to west. I have not made it to the east. Shashamani, could you enlarge? I, I know some of the people that have been, you know, Martin McClana for one. But could you tell us more about what you know about Shashamani? Because I know that the emperor gave it for us. And I know there is millions of acres of land or hectares or whatever the case might be. Could you enlarge on that for us, please? All right. Shashamani uh, was a very favorite place of my grandfather where he used to go uh, for meditation and for uh, to relax. Fertile? Very fertile. Okay. It is one of the most fertile places in Ethiopia. Okay. And uh, it's, a, it's a large... Uh, it's a large community. It's in the, in the province of Sidamo. Right. Okay, which is the southern part of Ethiopia. Right. And it is, uh, has a lot of water. Um, good food, pe huh? People there uh, are spoiled with food. I can imagine. Yeah. So that means Ethiopia could never have been starving unless, unless, unless something was so really, really wrong. Absolutely. You know, okay. Pe yeah, people make the mistake. Devastatingly wrong. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, um, my next and, question. And, and let me just say this. Yes, please. Uh, that's why, why I, I'm praising the Rastafarian. It's a solid 
uh, African movement. Yes. Okay. Yes. And those who are trying to crush it yes. are those who are already weakened. Sure. Okay. That they have to, uh, you know, the temptation of the. F yes. Yes. Coming back <laughs> from creation, eh? Yes. Ma Apparently, no. Economic times are difficult in some areas, and people are saying, "Gosh, gonna have to tighten our belts." Master man was living and eating what he eats, vegetarian style and everything else. The yes. We, they, they, um, Russ McConnell did say he'll be here for another week. Yes. Enlighten us, because we really, Africa is for the Africans, and this is Marcus Garvey month. And here. And listen, I'm going to go now, and I want to hear all Rastafarian kings, and all Rastafarian kings around the world, and all Rastafarian children, and all men. When your father died, uh, we should be the emperor's son, son. when he died. Uh, d did you have time to, because in, you, you ended up being grown up by him, by right. the emperor. Uh, did he have time to share with you, like a father, certain ideas, oh, points, yeah, I'll tell you. Uh, personal Mind things about himself? Sense. Absolutely. You know, um, uh, in a lot of things, uh, you know, like when, we, we, when I was a kid, I used to fight a lot. <laughs> and uh, I used to always come bleeding to him. And the first question he'd always ask was, did you say sorry? I say I was the one who got beaten up, not the other guy. <laughs> so I said, always make sure that you say sorry before, you know, and if he doesn't take it, it's at least you've said sorry and, and mean it, okay? If he doesn't accept, that is uh, left up to him, okay? So I've, I've learned a lot of things, you know, a lot of these kinds of principles from His Majesty. You know, I could, I could go on for hours uh, talking about the different kinds of things that he taught me. If you were to learn tomorrow from the relatives who are still in Ethiopia that over these 13 years, the emperor was locked away in the palace, still being fed, obviously, um, how do you react? And, and how do you think the world would react? Bearing in mind the way the press gave it, he's dead, right. full stop. Uh, no funeral rites, right. no procession. Not one person in Ethiopia um, respects to him in, in any way. Uh, no service, no, no grave. Uh, how do you react? Uh, um, like I said, you know, uh, one, one has to go from the concept of forgiveness. And these people committed a crime, and we've got to be much bigger than them. So, let's say, I, I'd be bitter, but, you know, I have, that's what he taught me, and so I have to learn to forgive. No, while you stay away from Ethiopia, no doubt re-energizing yourself and get your plan of action, uh, is it likely that you will uh, form a strong force with other members of the family and probably take on the military who's in power? Yes, take them on, but take them on, you know, in a non-violent way. Uh, there, there are ways, you know, right now the Ethiopian people are waiting for a, um, a replacement. Okay, and that replacement, you know, there are uh, guerrilla fighter, fighters in Ethiopia, there are about 30 organizations, but their number one um, um, plan is to equip, to uh, give weapons uh, to people and to shoot their own brothers. Uh, we, we don't do that. We, we say we have to reason with them. We have to make, touch their conscience rather than shoot them off. <laughs> and uh, for the many people who may be asking, is Shashamani safe? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but right now I would say a lot of, you know, the, the military has a lot of way of, uh, you know, um, attracting Jamaicans to come to Shashamani, which is right now they're making money available and so forth. But as soon as Shashamani becomes a successful, which it is, then they will, uh, you know, confiscate it. So I'm saying to those who are going to Ethiopia, be careful, because it's a temptation. I hear you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that, you know. And I hope JBC TV will get some documentaries and share what's happening in Ethiopia now. As a matter of fact, we haven't heard anything in the strict sense. We had a lot of documentaries about um, what uh, the emperor did or didn't do, but in terms of Ethiopia now. Yeah. You see, that's, that's what I, uh, I want to say. 
Today there are more people uh, who are starving, there are more people who are dying, there are 50% of all refugees in the world are Ethiopians, okay? Uh, the education level is much lower, but you see, for the Western press, they, they don't do anything because it weakens Ethiopia. It's a weak nation. So therefore, but during Haile Selassie, one refugee, okay, he was very rich. Okay. You were giving me some figures on the reserves. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Introducing to you now a hot reggae song, No Lies, by artist Mosiah, available on all digital download platform, Apple Music, Spotify, available now, No Lies by Mosiah stream now smash that subscribe button see you on the next video i just thought the mindset